Hi there, welcome. This is Diane, one of five awesome optimists. I'm so glad that you took the time to join me today and I do hope that what I have to share with you will be of benefit to you and enrich your life, inspire or entertain in some way. Uh, that is what uh, we are all about here at, at the Five Awesome Optimists. I want to talk about something that maybe we take for granted, but I have noticed with um, <clears throat> some of the comments that I get on some, um, you know, some of my videos and stuff that uh, it still it shouldn't shock or horrify me at some of the really foul comments that some people make, but uh, it just doesn't occur to me to be that way. And I was looking through this book called As a Man Thinketh and have found a really amazing correlation. Actually, it's not that amazing, but that people who, who go around and leave what I call mud on other people's channels um, really love to bask in it like a little pig. And when you look at their channel and what they like and what they are like, uh, it doesn't, it's not that much of a surprise. But um, I also was surprised and a little bit disappointed at some of the people's comments on our what the bug appearance that they just couldn't stand people who were optimistic and they enjoyed reveling in their in their pessimism and their cynicism and uh, you know it's in, it's so fascinating to get other people's points of view and to realize that some people really enjoy being negative and I remember when I used to watch Sesame Street as a little girl Oscar the Grouch remember how he was always I'm Oscar the Grouch and uh, when he was miserable, he was happy, and so then he couldn't really be happy because he always wanted to be miserable, and so it was sort of this conundrum. Poor Oscar the Grouch, if he was miserable, then he was happy because he enjoyed being miserable. So that's one of those, you know, <laughs> the dog chasing the tail kind of thing around and around. But uh, I, I would like to, for your consideration, put out there that... Uh, being optimistic, I think, is the natural state of our life. When we are children, we are naturally that way. We don't think about all of the things that weigh us down as adults. That to return to our childlike state is the, the, the best way because it's the optimistic way. They don't hold grudges. They don't have any uh, hidden agendas. They just love. And they always, uh, they don't hold on to things and they just keep moving forward. And another thing that I have also noticed with people who are pessimistic or, or cynical is that they, they, they bask in darkness. And optimism is the opposite of that, where it's all about light and being clean. And <clears throat> in this little book here that I have that called As a Man Thinketh by James Allen, there's a little part in here that I wanted to highlight. Um, it says, men will, uh, men will continue to have impure and poisoned blood so long as they propagate unclean thoughts. Out of a clean heart comes a clean life and a clean body. Out of a defiled mind proceeds a defiled life and a corrupt body. Thought is the fount of action, life, and manifestation. Make the fountain pure and all will be pure. Change of diet will not help a man who will not change his thoughts. When a man makes his thoughts pure, he no longer desires impure food. And this is awesome too. Clean thoughts also make clean habits. The so-called saint who does not wash his body is not a saint. He who has strengthened and purified his thoughts does not need to consider the malevolent microbe. And uh, I, that was another little guard about, um, you know, like a little safeguard to optimism, is that you're always clean. And I've noticed that um, people who are very negative and they bask in their darkness, they're also filthy physically. Their places are filthy. Their, their hair is dirty. Their skin is dirty. And how much I delight in cleanliness and having, you know, 
clean teeth, and I've, I've talked a lot about the whole teeth thing, even in my Five Awesome Optimus videos, and how you know having the right tools to make sure that you're you you get off all that disgusting food. You ever talked with somebody who they have food particles all over in their mouth, and you're like, ugh, <laughs> ugh. Um, it's really quite a thing. So that is my my quick message today: is to increase your optimism by being clean and having clean thoughts and using your energy to uh, make this world and help other people and bask in things of light and of goodness instead of things that are evil and dark and filthy. And um, even just those words, saying them, uttering them from my lips, does not feel like a natural thing to do because I just don't go there. There's a full-on continuum of darkness and light, and I've talked about that too in some of my previous videos. But on this one, I just want to focus on cleanliness and optimism and what role cleanliness plays in being optimistic and how can you be optimistic if your place is a complete mess you know I, the other night I went to bed and I had just put on fresh sheets and and my whole room was like sparkling and I go oh it's so nice and I slept so beautifully and you know then this week I've been getting ready for this um, this big cast party and directors awards I directed a road show at my church and uh, so my house is kind of a disaster as I've been getting things ready to go for that and that affects me too and having studied a little bit of feng shui with an international feng shui master Marie Diamond who was featured in the movie The Secret um, has really taught me a lot to be very aware of my surroundings also and that's a that's a topic for another day but um, just to keep on with this this little thing today about being clean and really enjoying being clean and making the effort to keep yourself clean inside and out to really increase your optimism. So I thank you for joining me today. I'm Diane, one of five awesome optimists. To increase your optimism, um, increase your cleanliness of mind, body, and spirit. And I am inspired. The telephone. <laughs>